Yo, what is up guys? Shouncis here. Now this time we're going to be reviewing volume 16 of Demon Slayer right here. I'm sorry this video took a while. Last weekend was my birthday so I just spent it all celebrating that. But we previously went over volume 15 and there was so much information that came from this volume right here with Nezuko being able to conquer the sun. We learned about more characters like Tomioko and his connection with a character called Sabito. And speaking of Sabito, this volume right here wasn't the first time that we've seen him. If you guys remember the season one anime, we actually first got introduced to him when Tanjo was trying to cut through that border. We've seen him in his ghost form. So it's pretty cool that pretty much Tanjiro and Tomiyoko, you know, they both can use water breathing. They're both pretty much know who Sabito is because that's pretty dope. So we're going to be reviewing volume 16 of Demon Slayer. So with this volume right here, Tanjiro Inosuke and Zenitsu head off to Giyome Himejima's training and he's the stone pillar and this dude is the strongest Hashira out of all the other ones and his training is hard too. It has three phases to it. There's waterfall training where the water is cold enough to kill you. There's log training where you have to lift three heavy logs and there's boulder training. Now boulder training is the hardest because you have to push a huge boulder a couple of feet ahead of you. So Guillaume says that these are the only three simple things you have to do now. What's simple to him is not simple to everyone else. That's how you know this dude's a beast. The purpose of doing this training is because it teaches you how to be strong in your legs and hips, pretty much the base of your body, and you need that part to pretty much have a solid offense and defense. If you look at a character like Zenitz, he should know all about this because with his thunder breathing, you know, the way he's moving, that's all in his base, so... There's some good purpose to this training. So my man Tanjiro completes the waterfall and the log train within six days, but that boulder training, that's what's giving this man the most problems. And this is where he meets up with Genya, and Genya gives Tanjiro advice on a technique called repetitive motion. And Guillaume does this technique all the time. And speaking of Guillaume, what's interesting about him is that he pretty much always says these Buddha sort of phrases to it. And he always has his hands like this, just rattling around. Yome is such an awesome character and so with this repetitive motion it means that you're predetermining what move you're gonna make and this pretty much heightens your concentration moves making your moves a lot stronger. What's interesting about all this training that's going on is that Tanjiro's mark on his forehead is getting darker now. I don't know what this means but I'm gonna keep my eye on that you know Ginya tells them that so I'm curious what sort of outcome that will lead to so while all this training is going on this man moves on is chilling in the Infinity Castle and this man spots 60% of the Demon Slayers with the help of the upper rank 4 demon. Now he looks like he has an ability where he can have eyes move out that can pretty much spy and locate people so... Now I'm curious because Muzan and the other upper rank demons haven't made a move in a while so this is going to get interesting. So Tanjo is learning repetitive motion and it pretty much opens up all your senses and it's cool that Ginya can use this repetitive motion also even though he can't do breathing techniques. Now with everyone else they pretty much use like a memory that causes them like pain or anger to use it but Tanjiro is different you know he thinks about all his loved ones and especially my guy Ren Goku who by the way is still my favorite character out of everyone in the whole anime or manga. I still love you Ren Goku but yeah Tanjiro thinks about his loved ones. Eventually Tanjiro is able to push the boulder completing his training with Giyome and Inosuke is able to complete the training too. Now Zenitsu I'm gonna need you to catch up a little bit because you weren't able to do it yet so anyways. Tanjiro completes it and this makes him so dehydrated that he's pretty much close to death actually. This is where Guillaume gives him some water and gives him acknowledgement. Now we learned about Guillaume's backstory and this is an interesting backstory. Now Guillaume Himejima, the stone pillar. Now we learned in his past that he used to raise orphans in the village and one day a demon just came in and killed all the orphans except for one. Now keep in mind this was during a time where Guillaume never hit or punched a living creature at all and he didn't know how strong he was so to protect that one orphan that was still alive this man pretty much punched that demon and this is where he figured out how strong he was because this man's fists were covered in blood but he said it felt like hell when he hit someone so you can tell how peaceful of a person he was because he seems like he doesn't like hitting people at all, but to save that one orphan that was left, you know, he's pretty much punching and bashing this demon, getting blood on his fist, and pretty much when the sun comes up, you know, with demons, when they hit see the sun, they burn away. So the sun comes up, the demon burns away, and it's just Guillaume and the one orphan left, and people start to come. It pretty much looks like 
Giome was the one that killed all the orphans because there's no evidence of the demon at all. And the orphan is so, like, traumatized of what happened that she can't even speak at all. Like, she can't interpret what happened. So it pretty much looks like Giome did all the killing and they pretty much locked the man up for it. They almost execute this man, but, you know, the leader of the Demon Slayer Corpse, Ubuyashiki, is the one that rescues him. And we also learn in this backstory that Giome is blind, so... This dude is the strongest Hashira out of all the other ones, and the man can't even see, so that's pretty awesome. So Guillaume pretty much acknowledges Tanjiro, you know, he sees him as like a pure-hearted person, and it's pretty dope because Guillaume also decides to train Genya, so that's pretty awesome in itself. So Tanjiro's pretty much headed to Giyu's training now, so as Tanjiro is heading to Giyu's training, he sees him sparring with Tsunami now. I also have volume 17 right here, which I'm going to review also, so look out for that. But he's on the cover of volume 17, and this looks sick. So, Gyu and Tsunami are pretty much sparring with each other. And this is how the Shira are trained, you know. They're sparring with each other, and these dudes are using wooden swords. And the breathing moves that they use are just awesome. The season 1 anime is already out right now, so we've seen how cool the animation looked for the water breathing moves from Tanjiro and Giyu, so I can't wait to see how the breathing moves look from Tsunami and other people that can use it. So Giyu and Tsunami are sparring with each other with wooden swords, and Tanjiro is able to follow the movements that they're doing. This shows how much better Tanjiro has gotten over time now. The moves that Giyu and Tsunami are doing are pretty awesome looking, you know. You got Tsunami doing a wind breathing move called Dust Whirlwind. You got Tomioko doing a move called Water Breathing Fourth Form Striking Tides. And they both do a move at the same time, you know. Tsunami does a move called Cold Mountain Wind and Giyu does a move called Drop Ripple Thrust. So these dudes are doing some awesome moves right here and Tanjiro comes in and tries to offer Tsunami sweets and this is where we see Tsunami just uppercut Tanjiro and knock him out now. Tsunami is such an interesting character, you know. There's no getting to this guy's good side and the faces that this dude makes, I never seen anyone in this anime or manga make the craziest faces, the most berserk type of faces like Tsunami, you know. He's an interesting character but he pretty much walks away and what's interesting is that this man pretty much spots the eyes that the upper rank 4 demon was using to pretty much locate most of the demon slayers, so... Shit is getting interesting. And when I say it's getting interesting, I mean because Muzan pretty much is right in front of Ubuyashiki's mansion. He found the leader of the Demon Slayer corpse. Oh my goodness. And Ubuyashiki looks horrible, by the way, you know. That whatever illness this man got is serious because this dude just looks like he's ready to die. The dialogue that these two characters had, Muzan and Ubuyashiki, was powerful, you know. For a thousand years, the Demon Slayers were trying to take down Muzan, and it's interesting because Muzan and Ubuyashi come from the same bloodline now. These two aren't closely, you know, related to each other because Muzan's like a thousand years apart from Ubuyashi, but I guess I can sort of think of him as maybe an ancestor. Ubuyashi was supposed to die six months ago from what's going on right now, and what's been keeping this man alive was pretty much the desire to defeat Muzan, and the bandages kind of reveal like how his eyes and face looks like, and this man has blood coming out of his mouth, you know, his eyes look like they're red, and the skin looks horrible. This dude is not in a good condition at all. Ever since Muzan was born, this caused the curse for the entire bloodline, and Kids and everyone was just dying at an extremely young age. Some of them were dying instantly, so Ubuyashiki pretty much tried to marry a priest's wife, but that only made people live up until they were 30, pretty much, and Ubuyashiki is only 23 years old, guys. He didn't do this. This was recently. So the, we learned that the only way to relieve this curse on the bloodline is you gotta take down Muzan. Muzan's goal is pretty much to be undying, and what this means is that he wants to live forever without having any weaknesses. That's why he's looking for Nezuko right now, because the sun is his main weakness, and we learned that Nezuko is able to, you know, withstand the sun from the previous volume that we've seen. So, he wants to be undying, but Ubuyashiki says the only thing undying in this world are human feelings, and what he means by that is that if someone's life gets taken away, you know, all their loved ones their feelings are going to remain on forever. You know, those feelings don't go away. And demons don't know what this feels like because demons don't have emotions, you know. If Muzan dies, every other demon is gone in this world. So, it's pretty interesting. Ubuyashi says if he dies, 
this is only gonna strengthen all the Demon Slayer corpse around him. So it's pretty dope. It gives me like there was a phrase in Naruto, if you guys watch it, called the Will of Fire, where like that will gets passed on to the next generation. That's kind of the vibes I'm getting from when Ubuyashiki said that, you know, if you take me down, all these Hashira behind me, they're gonna be more motivated to take you down. So do what you gotta do. It also gives me Rengoku vibes also because that awesome fight he had with Ikaza, you know, Ikaza was trying to persuade him to become a demon, but, you know, you're not going to turn my man Rengoku into a demon, you know, it gives me those sort of vibes also. So Crow pretty much does this emergency summon that pretty much tells all the Hashira to run to Ubuyashiki's mansion because he's in danger. So all the Hashira pretty much running, you know, scared and worried that something's going on in the mansion and, bro... The Ubuyashiki mansion just blows up out of nowhere. Now, I did not expect this to happen at all. This man, Ubuyashiki, pretty much sacrificed himself, you know. His wife and his kids were there also to try and take down Muzan. And he was also using himself as bait for one of the other Hashira to come. Now, this was crazy, you know. We see Muzan's body after the aftermath of this explosion on the mansion. And, you know, him being a demon, unfortunately, he can pretty much regenerate himself. His body looks disgusting at this point right here though but this man's regenerating but it's a lot slower thanks to Tamayo if you guys don't know who she is she was on season one of the anime and she's one of the demons that's against Muzan so we learned that she had an interesting past also you know she became a demon because she had an illness back in the day it seems like a lot of these characters just had illnesses but she had an illness back in the day and she pretty much turned into a demon because she wanted to see her kids grow up but Turning into a demon, she actually ate her kids and her husband. So after that happened, she pretty much regrets turning into a demon. If she knew that would have happened, she wouldn't have turned into a demon at all. Tamayo was cool and everything, you know. She has this blood demon art where she brings out these thorns that just pierces through Muzan's body. But, you know, Muzan's still regenerating and he pretty much grabs Tamayo's head. This is where one of the cool moments happened in the volume. This man, Gionme Himejima, comes in looking furious you know he uses a chain that has a spike ball on one end and like a blade on the other end and this dude pretty much comes in and just bashes Muzan's head off with the spike ball on one of the ends so it's pretty cool because this is the first time we see Guillaume looking extremely angry and you know he's gonna go in because he's the strongest Hashira out of all the other ones his weapon of choice seems pretty interesting because you know it seems like the perfect mid-range sort of combat so when I said Ubuyashiki used himself as bait for one of the other Hashira to come, I meant Guillaume. So props to Guillaume because the other Hashira come in also and all of them look scared and spooked when they see Muzan. And Guillaume kept his composure the whole time. So props to Guillaume. You know, all of them are doing their awesome breathing moves at the same time. But this is where Muzan does some cool overpower type of stuff. It looks like he pretty much warps all the Hashira. You know, not all the Ashira, but everyone in the Demon Slayer place to the Infinity Castle. They all just start dropping to the Infinity Castle. This was cool as hell, but damn, yo, Muzan is a problem. When I say all the Demon Slayers got pretty much dropped into the Infinity Castle, you see pretty much Genya, you see Inosuke, you see Zenitz. Everyone is at the Infinity Castle right now, so this is a pretty sudden change of events right now, and... Pretty much all the Demon Slayers are pretty much fighting off against these, you know, lower ranked demons. They're trying to wear them down. We see some awesome breathing moves, especially when Tanjiro and Giyu do their water breathing moves at the same time. We also see my man Igoro. I think that's how you pronounce it. You know, he's protecting Kanroji and Kanroji is just beautiful, guys. She's the wifey out of this whole anime and manga right here. If I can marry someone... It's definitely Kenroji, but, you know, Igoro look like he can do some awesome serpent breathing moves too, and, you know, Sanemi's killing these lower rank demons, and the face Sanemi just makes are just crazy. I know I've said this before, but Sanemi just makes some interesting faces. The first interesting encounter that we have in this Infinity Castle is my girl Shinobu, who's good at poisoning abilities. She pretty much encounters the upper rank 2 demon. I believe his name is Doma, so... Shinobu against the upper rank 2 demon. This is about to get good. 
We learned that Doma is pretty much the one that killed Shinobu's sister named Kanai, and Shinobu even wears the same sort of jacket, sort of clothing as her sister, so Shinobu's pretty much, she wants some revenge right now, and Doma's an interesting upper rank 2 demon, so this man's pretty much twisted in the head, but I feel like it's kind of like that for the rest of the demons too. This man pretty much feels that he's doing justice whenever he eats humans, you know, he feels that he's relieving them of their, like, pain and suffering. Now, Shinobu might not be the strongest, you know, physically or muscle-wise out of the rest of her share, but when it comes to her swinging her sword, she's a beast at it, you know. When she thrusts her sword, she can pierce through rocks, and the emotion on her face is just epic right here. This was the first time that I've seen her this angry before, so we're seeing a lot of emotion right now from all these Ashira, you know. Faces from, you know, Gyome, Tsunami, Shinobu. I'm seeing facial expressions i never seen before. Now, Shinobu is known for her poison abilities also, and what's interesting is that we learned that she was sharing information about poison with Rui from his mountain, so this is pretty much why her poison abilities are so strong. If you guys don't remember who Rui was, just remember the season one anime when Tanjiro first did his Kagura dance against that one demon, yo. That's who Rui is, so that's why Shinobu's poison moves are so strong, but... Doma's able to withstand these poison moves, so this makes him pretty scary. He's able to withstand something that Shinobu is really good at. Now, with this upper rank 2 demon Doma, his backstory was pretty interesting, and he was born with these rainbow pupil colored eyes, pale gray hair, and his people just, you know, they worshipped and prayed all around him because they thought he was gifted, and he wasn't actually, you know. This dude saw pity out of everyone around him, and his views of death were different. This man was actually just born to be a demon, actually. He had the perfect mindset for it, you know. He was pretty twisted in the head during his past. Doma's blood demon art moves are extremely scary, you know. He's able to freeze part of Shinobu's blood, and with the two fans that he uses, he's able to pretty much turn those frozen parts of her blood into mist, pretty much, and just scatter it around with the fans that he used. This makes it even scary for Shinobu to breathe, so... Doma's scary. Shinobu's moving extremely fast in this fight right now, but all this is worthless because this girl is losing blood. You know, she's getting cut without even knowing it. She's in bad condition right now, but thanks to her sister Kanaya for the motivation, she goes in, she does this insect breathing, dance of the centipede move, where she's just zigzagging around the whole panel, and Doma can't even follow what she's doing right now. She gets this good pierce on Doma, and this is where the volume ends off now. With this pierce that she does to Doma, I don't know if she's cutting through like his body or the neck. I can't tell from this angle right now, but that's where pretty much the volume ends right now, and this was a sick volume right here, you know. Rest in peace to my man Ubu Yashiki, but... I got a feeling, you know, this is just going to motivate all the Hashira, like you said, and I can't wait to see what goes on right now, you know. I don't know if this is going to be the final battle out of everything that goes on, but that was my volume review, and I have volume 17 with me also. I'm going to review this one in a bit. You guys don't worry about it. Props to everyone that's in Japan right now watching the Demon Slayer movie, the Mugen Train that came out recently. When it comes out in North America, I'm going to give my review on it during that time, but until then, I'm just going to wait. But that was my review, guys. This is just getting better and better with each volume, guys. I can't wait to see what happens next, and peace.